Jesus, they're gonna break up the whole city. Damn! Oh, sh don't do it. Don't do it. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to moving. We are now on to episode. Is it 14? Yes, 14, which is called The Idiot. That is, uh, that's harsh. <laughs> we've had humanists, we've had, uh, what was it? Romanticists, romanticists, we've had the monster and now the idiot. So very interesting. Uh, I'm looking at the thumbnail. It looks like we're looking at a new character from either the past or the present, but I'm thinking the past because all of the titled characters like this have always been people that have been from the retiree group of people in this show. And looking at the thumbnail, I see uh, gang -un or class president's dad is in the thumbnail. So that's gonna be good to know because we've seen his dad a couple of times throughout the show, but he's very much been in the background. And I do remember seeing when I first saw him back in, I think the first episode that we saw him or the second one, that he seems like maybe something might be going on uh, developmentally for him or there, there's so many reasons why someone might be acting a little different, but I definitely could see that he didn't seem like he was like everybody else. It looks like we're finally about to get some context on him now, so I'm very excited about that. And as far as the last episode, we got more uh, background on Chuan or Hisu's father, you know, after seeing how he kind of came to be and in, uh, into the agency and how he was brought in, we got to see what happened to him after the capture of Doshik because we know that him and Doshik were partners for a while there, but then Doshik was taken in by the agency after he was found and Juwon was left on his own. And so we saw that Juwon had to get another job within the agency and he was doing things that he really wasn't suited for, things he didn't really find a lot of joy in, but he did it because he had a wife and a family and he really wanted to be a responsible guy going forward. But we see after a while, he didn't feel like that job was really the best use of his abilities. And we see that unfortunately Min saw that as a golden opportunity to swoop in and recruit him back into the business. And um, then, yeah, we got to see a little bit of how he worked on with the agency after that with a new team, which involved the people that we saw earlier in the season, the people who were, um, well, three of them we know were wiped out. And uh, so now we know that he absolutely knew who all those people were, which is something I didn't know when I was watching that episode back um, when Juwan beat the crap out of Frank. But anyway, we see that that was his life and then eventually they had Hisu. And then of course we know that Hisu's mom passed away and we ended the episode heartbreakingly with him just trying to deal with all the things that come along with losing a family member and just how shattered that left him. So very excited to get into this episode and another character. Hopefully after this, we'll start getting into some of what's going on in the present because I'm very, very excited to see what's going on with these kids and how we're gonna bridge the old and the new together now that we have a whole generation that's come after these um, after these characters. Without further ado, let's get into this episode. But just before I do, a reminder that I do lots of different reactions here on this channel. If you'd like to support me in any way on this journey or any of the other ones, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and show some love to this video if you are feeling it with that like button and let me know what's going on in the comments below. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right about now. Home's not gonna quite be the same, hey? Nope, she's awake. <laughs> Well, yeah, actually, period. Mm-hmm. He wasn't asking that casually. I guess that's fair. As long as it's not like daily. Someone needs to punch Mr. Min's face in. I'm dead ass. Before the season's done, I need his face to look like the guy that, uh, that smirky guy from the clubs in Jung Joon's past. I need that. 2003. Chung Chung Kyung? Chung Kyo Chung. My God, that was too fast. Sir? Pabu. Sir, uh, boy, uh. yeah, excuse you. Nasty. Probably. Smile. 
That's right. Period. You're what? I'm what? Hmm. You should be more scared of her. Cute. Jesus, like, this is so attention grabbing. Like, they're not trying to hide that he's super strong at all, huh? Yeah, don't let anyone use you for your strength, sir, because they will turn on your ass the first second they get trust. That's right. Priorities. Hmm. Sweet. I'm glad he got a woman who genuinely cares about him. I'm wondering what's going on with him, though. Too late. So homie's just not even hiding his abilities. Okay. But I guess he hasn't told, been told specifically not to. Hmm. Give me my shoes back. Give me back my shoes. I think that is what you meant. Exactly. Mind your business. You didn't have to say that. And again, just because people aren't conventionally smart doesn't mean they're not smart. Is it? Because they see how stupid strong he is. They're never letting him out. So I'm telling you, Mr. Min's about to come in. There you go. Because I don't know how well he heals. Whose baby is this? What's going on? Excuse me? Who? What? How are you not minding a bit? I'm worried about the baby, guys. Why is no one checking on the baby? Who leaves a baby unattended in a market? I know it's not Gong Moon because he's in nursery school. He's too old. Oh, he's that young. Oh, he's, br wait, did he hear that? Okay, because I was like, if he hears her screaming, he's going to bust through that car right now. Did he go to prison then? He must have gone to prison. Because if gong -un was a baby, but I didn't see, they didn't say what year it is. Papa, yeah. yeah, he must have gone to prison then. He got burned. Okay, I remember back in the first episode, we saw that and I was wondering what happened. Okay, you get a nod. We're just gonna have to work at it. He doesn't remember you, which sucks because it looks like you were all about him. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Why is he bringing, being brought out specially? Wow, he's always just been a barrel of sunshine, huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah, she ain't gonna have time to eat all that. Sir, the backpack. The backpack. Come on, there we go. All right. At least she didn't get halfway to school. We've all been there. <laughs> Not them sitting in the exact same posture. First steps. Stop, why is this making me emotional? <laughs> He's wearing his daddy's shirt. You know what it is though, I think I've always worked, like when I was younger, I've worked with a lot of, pe lot of people who have been like neurodivergent and people with different uh, special needs. And I don't know, they've, I've just always had such a big spot, soft spot for them. Again, I don't know if that's the case with, with uh, Gong Un's dad though. We, we still don't understand why he is the way he is. <laughs> Cute. Look at that. Just need a little time now, y'all are besties. Let's go, Kaja. Cute. I'm so glad that, oh, I'm not 
her waving for the Oh, it's a memory. Oh. Of course. All right, well, they're finally ready to get rid of you guys. No. You can't go back to prison, sir. You have a record. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will go back to jail for like a long time. Because mm -hmm. I think, you know what's going to happen? I bet you, because I'm thinking he went back to prison because gang -un is not close to him now. So if they were this tight and now he's not, something tells me he went back to prison again. Because all it would take is one of those cops to touch his wife and homie's going to lose his stuff again. <laughs> dismiss yourselves. I love that. <laughs> I'm using that, but please dismiss yourself. <laughs> I get it though, if that's her livelihood, their shops are the only way of making money. I get why she's trying to strike, but. Really, batons? We need batons for women. Okay. I don't think he's with us anymore, sweetie. Who is so? Oh no, he is alive. Okay, so does someone just, is he Aquaman? What's going on here? <laughs> Cutie. Oh, it's raining. Interesting, these parallel stories going on between these two. I wonder if they end up working together. Because I just, I'm surprised Min didn't find out about him. Did he, she left a minor at home? Listen, I understand that someone not coming home on time when you're babysitting is not okay. But you do not leave a minor home alone. What? Anything could have happened. Or bring her with you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, go. Because if your husband sees a scratch on you, sis, people are dying today. They're going to destroy the shops, aren't they? Ma'am? I get it. I can only imagine how heart-wrenching it is to not, to see your livelihood get destroyed. But ma'am, it's your life. These men are not messing around. Not you ending up in prison next. Yeah, this man's about to mess a lot of people up. But yeah, I'm surprised Min didn't look for him the first time he got arrested. Okay. Okay. Gang used to be so cute. Yeah, he's not coming back. He is definitely not coming back. He's going to prison. Or Min gets him out of prison but makes him work for him and that's why he never comes back. Yeah, and this is exactly why Gang was so mad at him. Hopefully he'll figure out that from the looks of things his dad would never lie to him. Yeah, so dear. Oh dear. Yeah. Not, not, nope, nope. Too late. I mean, at least that's humane. Okay, I take it back. You're trying to take his skin off. Jesus, he is crazy strong. I wonder if they catch him. They're going to, because he assaulted police officers. Oh, work. Middle of the night? What do they expect him to do? Min is such a dick. Oh, I have a child, so you want me to leave her alone? In the middle of the night, dickhead? Oh, Min needs to get it. I'm so over him. Uh-oh, baby gone. You slept too soundly, ma'am. Oh, that fish ain't gonna make it. The culprit? And you have the nerve to be eating ramen while someone's child's home alone. Min, I need you to rot. Yes. 
Yeah. I feel like she's going to wake up. Yep. <laughs> she's a grown up. This sucks. Min needs to go down painfully. I don't know. The fact that he has a baby. He's a monster. Y'all so sick. This whole organization needs to go down. My only worry is that with Min, he's probably the lesser of the evils. Where'd the little boy with the fish go? So much is going on. So much is going on. Okay, well, now you know there's a step there. <laughs> Not the fish just living their lives in the sewer. I don't even think they're paying him more than minimum wage to do this. Like, at never. Absolutely not. I'd be like, fire me. Quite frankly. He's really strong. They warned you. Y'all, don't fight. Be friends. Come on. I noticed that the one thing they didn't tell him is that he's not mentally... Like, he's not mentally able fully. Like, they could have mentioned that he's not okay. Wow. <laughs> this show has such good fights. It has such good fights. The reflexes. Jesus, they're gonna break up the whole city. Damn! Oh, shit! Don't do it. Oh. Don't do it. Right? Like, can we be friends? Let's go home. We both have kids. Let's go. Jesus. This is crazy. No wonder Frank did not phase Juwon at all. If he survived this, <laughs> Frank was nothing. He was right. Frank was B-rate. Hmm. Sleep too soundly for a mama. No, I'm telling you, when I was that age, if I moved as much as a hair, my mom, she was like, what's going on? Where are you? She had sonic hearing when I was young, man. Not that I'm blaming her, by the way. I know mamas get tired. I'm just saying. There we go. Welcome back. That's enough. Oh my God. No, gang -un is a problem. Ow, ow, broken hands, broken I thought their hands were going to connect. That was going to hurt like a mofo. Where's the baby? Maybe that's what stops this fight. They're not going in there. I can tell you that right now. They all cowards. I mean, can't Homie just throw those can cuffs? Like, he could break them in a second. Are we kidding? Bro, you're going to have to knock him out if you can. Never mind. I was about to say, chokehold might be good, but you're gonna have to actually hold on. Yeah, he has to go sleepy sleep. And also, screw Mr. Min. You could have given this man some sedatives or something. There we go. Take a little nap. There we go. Christ. Hurry up. This guy probably recovers fast. Let's go. They don't pay you enough for this, bro. <laughs> All right. I didn't actually think they'd send anybody down there. <laughs> Not him just dragging him. <laughs> You're going to need him. You're going to need him because he can pull that open. Let's work together. Kaja, kachi, kachi, kaja. Okay, bros. Yes. Teamwork is dream work, baby. Although his hands probably aren't going to heal that fast. See, I know he wouldn't want. Exactly. He was not going to care. Min, when I catch you. When I catch you, Min. Did he let him go? He's fine. He's a little hypothermic, but he'll be all right. Might have a little dysentery, but that'll pass. You know here he lives. You know everything about him. Go get him. 
Y'all really need to take Min out. I'm dead ass. He's got to go. It's a long story. Hmm, I know, Muffin. Wow, Gangun is his whole life. It's not the both crying. Oh, don't hug him in sewer water, honey. Okay. Enjoy it, because you're about to go away. But it looks like Min gets a hold of him, though. Really? Guns? Can y'all chill? Me and unbelief. Uh, uh. Hmm. <gasps> Gong Un did that? That's right, Gong Un said get a hell away from my daddy. Yeah. So he didn't know that till then? I thought that's why he was asking about the girl, about Hisu. Uh-oh, he know exactly what that means. He knew exactly what that meant. Look at him. So this was the birth of the, this was the birth of the, the program. You know you're gonna have to take him out one day, right? Okay. Take him out, Gong Un. That's right. Knock every last one of them into the next, next lifetime. Please, have me stuttering. She's, remember she did that in the second episode. That's what happens. Kids of single parents learn to be self-sufficient real young. This is when he ran. I get it. He knew right away that Min was going to come after her. That makes sense now. Makes sense. He found you anyway. That's right. Bye bye, government apartment. She smiled. Mm -hmm. Dad's like, don't make me cry in this chicken batter. Seriously, don't cry in the chicken batter. People don't need that that negative emotion when they're trying to eat. They're trying to eat their emotions away. Don't do that. Damn. Full circle. Wow. Okay. What a great episode. We finally learned a little bit more about Gong Un's past and his father. We see that, I guess he never worked. Well, I shouldn't say never. To our knowledge, he didn't work for the agency, unlike some of the other kids where the parents were a part of the agency. Gong Un's dad somehow managed to go undetected for a long time. And I think that's very interesting that no one thought it was strange that this man could carry like 80 packages on his back without a problem and run super fast. Like, but I guess it was the nineties and you know, that was back in those days. Like I said, smartphones didn't exist the way it is now. We didn't have cameras everywhere. So those kind of things probably went down as urban legends more than anything else back then. But yeah, crazy that he was able to basically live a normal life. But we see that they describe him as mentally handicapped. Obviously they used a lot of very very outdated terms that we know we would consider to be cancelable these days. But back in the 90s, early 2000s, a lot of those terms were still very much used. So I get why they said it. Um, I guess it is something that he's always had. So I'm not sure. As I said, nowadays, I feel like they probably would have much more specific and less generic terms. Like, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking it's possible that he is just uh, disabled mentally. It's also possible he's on the spectrum. You know, the fact that he needs to have everything timed a certain way and, you know, he has to kind of have a schedule set up. That is something you sometimes see with people who are on the spectrum. But as I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to diagnose, but I'm just saying it could be a variety of things. But I think we can say that they said he has got reduced speaking capability and his wife said that he doesn't really have like a lot of thinking capacity, which I don't think is true per se, but I do think he does struggle possibly with more complex things. But as I said, if there's anything I've learned with working with people who are neurodivergent in the past and people with different disabilities is that sometimes if they're not like, if they don't function in the way that we know or understand it doesn't mean that they're not intelligent or that they're not capable it just may mean that you have to find different ways to 
help them get what they need or, you know, do what they need to do. So anyway, interesting that he's had these abilities. I have so many questions now, like what did his parents do? How did they handle this? When did they figure out this kid was crazy or like crazy strong, like the Hulk? How did he go to school? Like, did he go to school? Like just so many questions. But anyway, somehow he met Gongo's mom and I really love seeing that she was so protective of him and that she never condescended to him. You know, she very much just met him where he was at and she learned how to reason with him, how to talk with him, how to, you know, how to help him do what he needed to do when he couldn't necessarily make the best decisions. Because I think with him, it's not so much that he didn't know how to do what he needed to do. It was more that he didn't necessarily necessarily think about the outcome of his actions, so to speak. And so obviously having someone with his level of strength loses temper, dangerous, right? Like Hulk smash, right? That's what we can see happen. But we see that much like gong he is super fast, super, yeah, super fast and he's super strong and he can basically leap like the Hulk, right? He can just kind of use his ability to shoot himself into the air to leap uh, really far distances. So gong we've seen do all of those things now. And we see that, yeah, he had gong and I really loved how they showed how he was just obsessed with him. Like the mom's like, you don't even ask how I'm doing. You never ask if I eat anything. As soon as you, you see me, you just care about the baby, which is so cute. But yeah, like he has so much love for gong -un. Like that's his world. And seeing that, unfortunately, he had to leave when gong -un was a baby because whatever happened at the market, it looks like that man must have put hands on his wife. And listen, act up, you get smashed up. I don't think you should have gone to jail for that. You touch a woman, you deserve to get what you get. But obviously that guy was in far worse shape than um, gong -un because Gong Hoon is crazy strong and he should really never hit a person unless he <laughs> unless it's life or death. But anyway, we see he had to go to jail, it looks like for at least a few years. But then we saw that he, him and Gong Hoon were able to build their relationship back again. And again, we see that this situation happened where they were, looks like they were building some sort of new project that was gonna wipe out all these street vendors. And for a lot of those street vendors, that was their livelihood. It was their only sense of source of income. So they were against it because it looks like the government wasn't offering any type of compensation for them or any place for them to relocate to. So yeah, understandably, they were trying to stand up for themselves and try to keep that from happening. But it, it wasn't, that's not the way it typically goes. Unfortunately, when these big corporations want what they want, they will use anything they can to get it. And we saw that they sent in people to destroy all of these these um, stands and to basically make it so they have nothing to come back to. And gong -un's mom, I mean, I don't think that was the smartest thing for her to do, but I understand why she did it. She tried to protect what they had. And of course she ended up getting arrested. And we see that uh, gong -un's dad saw it and yeah, he lost it. Understandably, he was trying to protect his family. Like the only two people he cares about in this world are his wife and his son. And so yes, we see that that finally got the attention of people and then they called in Juan to come because he's the only person that would really be able to take someone like him on. And I like that they also showed some parallels between what was going on with Juan, how he was trying to cope after losing his wife because now he's a single parent. Now there isn't someone to stay home with his daughter. And as usual, Min is a complete and utter piece of crap. And he just refuses to give a damn about that. He's like, yeah, whatever. Like your kid's alone. Good. Like I need you. Like what? But again, I have to remember Min does not see these as people. He sees them as assets that like he can use at his disposal. He's made it clear more than once he could care less about these people. So anyway, we see that uh, Juwan was sent in to take care of it and Juwan tried to do it nicely, but of course, <laughs> gong -un's dad was not, you know, he, he didn't understand what was going on, bless him. There was just too much going on. And so we see that they had a, ridiculous fight. But in the end, uh, because that little boy Sun Wu, who apparently can talk to fishes, I don't think we would have seen Sun Wu that much. Maybe it was just for the episode to be the plot device to keep them from fighting each other. But I feel like Sun Wu is going to pop up again because they made sure that we knew his name and that he, we saw him with that fish like 50 times. And the fact that the, he said to the fish wanted to go home and then the fish kind of looked like he was almost trying to follow him when he left. So I don't know. Maybe it was a throwaway scene, but I don't think so. I'm thinking that Sun Wu is going to come up again, but I can't I don't think we've been introduced to him yet, but he would be around the same age. Oh no, he'd be a little bit older. Yeah, he, no, he'd be the same age as Sung Woo. Yeah, he'd be around the same age as, as uh, sorry, as uh, Gang Woon. So anyway, maybe he's at the high school, but I digress. So yes, uh, they have the fight and we see that um, obviously Juwon does not want to do this. And when he heard that this man has a son around the same age as his daughter, of course, he's going to be like, yeah, no, like go home to your kid, especially since he was home alone. And yeah, just a really sad scene where, you know, the little boy who clearly has got abandonment issues already where his dad's concerned concerned, got scared. He knows something's up. There's a lot of chaos going on, but it was just a beautiful scene with him coming home and him apologizing to his son because he, you know, even though gang -un's dad is, you know, as they say, he's not fully mentally there. He knows enough to know that he's abandoned gang -un, not abandoned, that's a worse word. He has left gang -un, bef gang un before and he doesn't want to do that again. But 
you know, he knew that that was a possibility and he just felt bad, right? He felt bad that he made his son sad. He he clearly, I don't think, forgot about like the, the trial that he had to go through to build back Gangun's trust after going to prison the first time. So just a really touching scene and Gangun seeing what he's been through now, like it's so much more understandable why he's so desperate to find friends and to find people to connect with who are like him. And since now we know that Min has had his eye on him since he was a kid, that also explains why he's so good at using his abilities. Cause I have a feeling much like Frank, he's been trained to use his abilities to some extent up until this point. And that's why he's so good at using them, right? The fact that he knows exactly how much to use when to pull back, when to let loose, etc. Like that's practice. So yeah, that's probably also been very isolating for him though. I can see Min keeping him away from people, but obviously he was probably the first person that Min focused on as far as this new breeding program because we found out in this episode, this is how Min found out that these powers are genetic or can be genetically passed on. So that's basically when he was like, okay. And I, I love how we saw that Juan realized immediately that if Min noticed that and started smiling, it meant bad news. He knew that they'd be looking at his daughter next. So that explains why he's been on the run. Like we saw back in the episode with um, with Hisu's back um, flashbacks where she said, we always moved every few years like dad was running from something. And now we know what it was. Every time he thought that maybe Min or his people were getting close to finding them again, he left. So I'm wondering whether or not Min actually did find them. Like, I feel like Min has known where they are for a while now, but he's just been like, let me just let them be for now. When I'm ready, I'll round them up because he is that kind of guy. But anyway, that explains a lot around that and how Min figured out that these kids, that the kids of these soups are useful. And that also explains why he's probably also been looking for Dushik's son for a while. Again, I feel like he might've already found them for a while ago, but we'll never know. I shouldn't say we'll never know. We have to wait to find out. So yeah, really good episode on the background of Gangun. As I said, it gave me a lot more insight into him and how powerful, like that kid is actually insanely strong. Like if that's how powerful he was when he was like four, five, he's probably stronger now. So that's insane. Great episode, really touching in some places. Like I said, Gangun's dad's got like a little special place in my heart. I am wondering what happened to him because we see that Min didn't want to use him because he's not, you know, mentally... I guess, able to do this job, but I'm hoping that at least he got looked out for. Cause like I said, they have the shop now and it looks like Gangun's mom's back. So I'm thinking Min must've given them their lives back with the stipulation that he got to do what he wanted with uh, Gangun until he was old enough. So that's what I'm thinking is Gangun is being breeded to be put into the NIS slash special unit when he gets of age. So lots of information there, but I don't think obviously Min wants to stop there. He probably wants all these kids, hence is why he's gathering them all at the high school at this point. I think he plans on, te- like that's, I think that's what's happening at the high school. I think they're using it as a testing ground to see which kids of these soups actually developed powers and which ones didn't. And the ones that did, Min probably has a larger plan for them that we just haven't seen yet. So good episode all around. Really, really liked it. Great way for us to get more background on yet another character we've seen and possibly introduce us to more people. Like I said, I'm wondering what's going on with Sung Woo if he's going to come back again. But I enjoyed it a lot and I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please throw a thumbs up on this video and some comments below and we will see you in the next video.